cover all of that for us. And remember, you can always put your perspectives in the comment section. And then, boy, the break that a lot of renters were getting during the pandemic, that is now over. Austin is covering it all for you. But first, we start with Holly, who uh, is tracking a little cooler start to the beginning of August, August 2nd. Boy, can you believe it? The first Monday of August, we have made it. I, I, I feel like we're all on that same, we can't believe that it's August mode. But that being said, yeah, it is definitely cool. This morning, most of you are in the 50s. Record low is 50 for this state, but it's going to be really pleasant. Mid 70s for highs, partly to mostly sunny. It does kind of feel like autumn. I'm not going to, you know, hold <laughs> back on that one today, but it's going to warm up really fast this week. We're literally going to go from today to temperatures in the low 80s through the middle of the week, and that's seasonal. 83 is the normal high. And then by the weekend, it gets really hot. We'll be 80s to even near 90 degrees. So there's going to be plenty of pool time. Don't you worry. We've got some really great weather coming. Okay, so the pool time is coming back. Uh, but this yeah. time, just a little, little cooler. Yeah. All righty. Thank you so much, Holly. We appreciate that. Now, before we get to the breaking We're news overnight, we do want to today. talk about, um, you know, the moratorium that has ended and Austin you were on that this morning how is this impacting renters yeah so over the weekend it expired and today is the first day where um if you're in risk of being evicted was a day that you can actually be evicted this hasn't been this came into play um a federal moratorium came into a account last year just due to the pandemic and people falling behind on on bills understandably of losing jobs and everything but um that did end this um this on saturday and today is that first day so yeah really kind of a, a terrifying thing for a lot of people who a might have been uh, out of a job due to the pandemic and fall into uh, financial trouble so um this is the day that you that is you could be potentially become evicted um so there's a number of things that you need to know we talked to a local real estate lawyer over the weekend. And this is the kind of tips that she said. And just basically, you, you want to know your rights. You can't just be thrown out of your apartment or house or whatever it is um, that day. Like they can't show up and be like, all right, get out. Um, th there's at least a three day window where, um, you know, the, the eviction notice is posted on your door and you have three days to either pay or uh, three days to leave and find a new place to live. Um, if a tenant is unable to pay, a landlord could call for a court hearing, which could take a few weeks for the, the judge to figure out your specific case. So uh, while that case goes through the courts, the tenant can also remain at their home. But I mean, just in general, just how much people have been hurting it, it, it over this past year and a half, whatever it's been just due to the pandemic. Um, the pandemic forced you know, a lot of people to fall behind on bills. Over $46 billion in federal aid was allocated to help tenants keep roofs over their heads. So um, uh, uh, this is going to impact a lot of people. And it's going to be a difficult process to just talking to this lawyer. She said that um, she anticipates a really large influx of evictions over which uh, over the next, you know, today and over the next um, week and couple months here as well, too. So um, it, this could be a mess for a lot of people. So um, but if you're in that or know someone that has the risk of potentially being evicted, uh, we have some more steps for you on our website, WKYC, and goes in a little bit more detail. And you can hear from that lawyer um, herself there as, as well. All righty. Thank you so much, Austin. Yeah, we definitely have that on WKYC.com for you. But let's, before we talk about our local Olympians competing right now, uh, let's talk about that uh, breaking news from overnight of Simone Biles returning to the Olympic competition. Well, uh, you're on that for us. Yeah, I mean, this was big news right when we were on air this morning. It, it hit right about um, just before 5 a.m. this morning that Simone Biles says she's coming back. She's going to try again. So as you know, she took herself out of a lot of the competition. It was the all-around competition and some of the individual events. But she says she is going to go back to the balance beam competition, which is tomorrow. Um, we've all watched her on the balance beam. She's incredible. As we were talking about last week, I mean, one of the commentators really put it in perspective for me where he said, put your cell phone on the floor. That's how much room they have to be doing their routine. And, and you see them doing backflips and, and jumps. And, um, Simone was very open by saying she had the twisties 
It was mental health and also getting the twisties in there where you kind of lose yourself in that space. So imagine trying to do the jumps, the backflips and everything, and then land on your cell phone. So hopefully she, I know. So hopefully she feels well enough. I mean, I'm I'm sure she wouldn't be rushing it in any way, but um, it's going to be exciting to watch her. She, um, let me, let me get this right. She got the bronze medal on the balance beam back in the 2016 Olympics. So she's going for gold. I mean, a lot of people I think she made a mistake on that one too, 2016, yeah. which is why she got the bronze. Yeah. Well, and actually, I was watching her on the balance beam during the um, the qualifying event, and that was one of the events that she kind of she stumbled. Like I remember them talking about, hmm, that's not really Simone. That's yeah, something's off. So I was watching her during that event. You know, the the non meddling events and. Um, yeah, I mean, she had a she had a couple mistakes. So you have to assume that her coaches have gone through this with her, that she's gone through, maybe been practicing. They have the you know the practice facilities where they can try it out. I mean, we're all assuming at this point. There's not right. information other than she's coming back. You have to assume that she's feeling well enough and wants to compete. So we'll we'll keep our fingers crossed for her. And and you know, it's been great to see her supportive of her other teammates, you know, her cheering on Suni Lee and um, oh, Michaela last night on the um, vault was incredible. So um, that'll be tomorrow. We'll be able to see, we'll be able to see Simone. And of course we're going to get all the breaking news for you. Yeah. Um, USA Gymnastics, they tweeted that out. Uh, we are so excited to confirm that you will see two U.S. athletes in the balance beam final tomorrow, Suni Lee and Simone Biles. And, you know, with um, Simone's withdrawal from the other ones, it has made way for other people to kind of win big. Like we just saw mm-hmm. overnight too, breaking news, Jay Carey, uh, she won gold in the floor exercise. So congratulations to her. Um, good for her because I know she had a kind of tough uh, go around for the all around there because uh, she took mm-hmm. Simone Biles's place and in, in that one where Suni Lee uh, won gold and so you know we definitely will be watching that and what else we will be watching Katie Najad who is uh, up right now she's our local Olympian and Dave you're you're tracking that right now yeah uh, not much to track though uh, she <laughs> has she has not gone yet uh, let me look here I'm following uh, no, still nothing here. Uh, but yeah, she is from Olmstead Falls and Paul Volter. Uh, great story. And uh, we've been waiting. I mean, as, as you know, I was thinking about this, uh, talking with someone the other day when we were, um, you remember the story we were talking about the local Olympian who found out the day before that he was going to the Olympics and, and uh, oh, yeah. on, on the air, we talked about it that's crazy to have to fly that far and then go right away to compete. Someone this weekend said to me, well, the one thing is you don't have to sit and think about it, right? You just get there and go. So mentally it might be easier. So you think about that for someone like Katie Najat from Homestead Falls, you're there and you're waiting until finally a week later you compete. So, um, you know, the wait continues and obviously we'll update it uh, as it goes on. But there is one other uh, local athlete that I want to talk about too is Clayton Murphy. Uh, Akron mm-hmm. grad lives in Northeast Ohio, trains in Beechwood. He advanced to the 800 meter final. So that's coming up here, uh, in a couple of days. Uh, Clayton Murphy won bronze in Rio in 2016. Oh, so, wow. um, more good news for local Olympians. I, I mean, it, we have a bunch there and it's been fun to follow. Certainly. So of course we will be following all of them and, you have to stick with WKYC.com. Make sure you download our app so you will get the alert, the push alert, as soon as we find out how Katie finishes. I know we are all watching and uh, ready to celebrate her uh, no matter what the result is, but I know she will do her best. Uh, so we thank you all for taking a few minutes to join us for this on-the-go post show. Uh, we hope you have a great Monday, the start of August. My goodness, summer is rolling along, I tell you. Um, have a great Monday, and we will see you tomorrow morning on-go starting at 4.30 a.m. Bye. <laughs>